Firstly, by show of hands, how many of you live in or around a town or city with a population of a thousand people or more? Okay, one more quick question. How many of you here like chocolate? Okay, I'm going to try and merge those two things within the next three minutes. So to start off with, uh, I've included an image here um, of the Earth at Night, which is an image taken by NASA, and it shows the extent of global urbanization. Did you know that in the first decade of this century, maybe five, six years ago, we passed a milestone? There's now more people living in urban areas than anywhere else on our planet. We are increasingly becoming urbanized. And what I mean by urbanization is the replacement of natural landscapes, often vegetated, with urban structures, artificial sur surfaces that we create. Parks become car parks, right? And there's lots of interesting uh, consequences of urban development. But the one that I want to talk about today is the modification of the energetics of the lower atmosphere, where you and I live and where we experience weather. Now, when you eat a bar of chocolate, you're actually not eating a bar of chocolate, you're eating altered solar energy, energy that could have been used to do other things, like say, heat the atmosphere. Solar radiation encounters a cocoa plant, and vegetation has the ability to harness this energy and turn it into food for itself. This is called photosynthesis. We then harvest that plant, we process it, we sell it, we eat a delicious bar of chocolate, but the energy could have done other things. However, when we pave over a vegetated area with things like concrete, asphalt, or any other artificial material, we are fundamentally restricting what energy can do when it reaches the surface of our planet. Um, artificial surfaces are not able to use energy the way vegetated surfaces are. As a consequence, more energy gets channeled into heating the air above the surfaces or gets stored below that surface. And stored heat energy isn't a good thing. It gets re-released at night when you and me are sleeping, and when we're trying to rest, the one thing you don't want is excess of heat energy. It leads to a thing called thermal stress. In 2003, there was a heat wave in France, and it caused 14,000 excess deaths, the majority of which occurred within urban areas, towns and cities, all of which can be explained by this excess heat energy found in urban areas. My research is about building a model that will be able to simulate what happens to energy when it encounters an urban surface. The model asks two very simple questions. What's the nature of your landscape? How big are your buildings? How tall are your trees? Then it asks, what's the nature of your energy? What's the weather like outside? And then using a string of mathematical formulae, it's able to output or simulate what happens to energy when it encounters an urban surface. Three things are going to happen by the end of the 21st century. One, we're going to see lots more lights on this map because urbanization is going to continue to intensify. Two, extreme heat events are going to become more frequent and more intense as we come to realize global climate change. And three, back in Ireland, we're going to have an aged population, which is a demographic that's very sensitive to excess heat energy. It is hoped that by building this model now, I'll help people address climate change in the future. And in so doing, they'll be able to save time, save money, and more importantly, save lives. Thank you.